I first want to thank the uh, festival organizers for the opportunity. Uh, if, uh, I mean, uh, somebody said that uh, things have changed in Europe in terms of TV series. The director of Media Desk here said the key word is TV series. And I think uh, if you had asked uh, me seven or eight years ago whether there would be uh, any Norwegian series uh, presented at uh, a festival here in, uh, in Spain, uh, there would be like uh, crickets. It's uh, it's been uh, uh, there's a wonderful boom going on, and uh, also in in my region, the Nordic region, and and now with a very special focus on Norway, uh, uh, which is very very cool to be a uh, a part of. Just as a curiosity before I begin, how many here have heard of or are watching the Norwegian series called Scum, the teen series? Okay, we have some hands. Yes. Uh, um, it's a fantastic phenomenon, uh, and it, it comes into something I will also talk a little bit about today. It's about specificity, and it was mentioned by the excellent panel we had here. It's about being true to making uh, uh, series, uh, telling stories from, from very specific circumstances. Uh, this is a key part of making them travel, and this is also where there can sometimes be conflict when it comes to co-production. Because uh, co-production, there are many specific cultures who want to have their say in a project. So if we can switch to the presentation um, thing. <laughs> there we are. So a little bit about uh, our company. And this is actually a snapshot of what it means that TV series is in focus. I come from a small independent company. Uh, I was a co-founder. Uh, and as you can see, we came from feature filmmaking and have transitioned gradually more and more into uh, drama series. This comes from the fact that uh, we, uh, as a production company, we follow talent. Talent is now in television. Um, uh, there is also the, the films we made 10 years ago are not really able to get made and, and, and seen in cinemas anymore. I'm speaking specifically about drama for grown-ups. Um, so it's a different world. And this is the Valkyrian concept, also presented a bit in the trailer. Um, as you can see, it takes place both underneath Oslo and above Oslo, um, and concerns the clinic and the partnership between these two main characters, a doctor and a doomsday prepper. This is a little bit about uh, who made it uh, and our format. Uh, the series creator is Erik Richterstrand, uh, who together with Thomas Seberg Turjusen was also a co-founder of Turden Film. So this is a group of key creatives that we've been working together uh, on and off for, for many years already. Um, and it was a commission by NRK, the uh, largest public broadcaster in Norway, um, whom we have worked with before also. Um, and as you can see, it's supported by public funding, uh, and, but with an international distributor, uh, our very close partners in the French company about premium content. So a little bit about the production. Uh, we had a 7 million euro budget, and uh, uh, this also plays into co-production. This was shot entirely in Oslo and the surrounding areas. And there's a reason for this I will return to. So this is also roughly 110 days, and then the studio and location percentage. Okay, timelines. This is already an 11-year-old idea. <laughs> um, that is to say, uh, it was de developed uh, as an idea, or half the idea was developed by a group of writers actually working for NRK. This was before I was involved, this was before uh, Turin Film was involved. But it came to nothing, and then it was only picked up when one of the writers, Thomas uh, Seberg Turjusen, uh, whom we did a miniseries with, uh, uh, we had a discussion about what he wanted to do next, and he picked up this old idea about the underground doctor. But then we did our own development and thought we expanded the, the, the scope of the idea um, before pitching it back to NRK, but as a, as a bit of a more developed uh, show along the concept that is actually the final one. Then came a couple of years of uh, on and off script uh, development um, before in 2014 we got a commission from NRK and also received some public funding. That was the foundation from whence we could uh, think internationally. Um, then we, uh, by February two years ago, we greenlit and we were able to pitch at the Berlinale Co-Pro series pitch. Uh, 
An interesting thing this about pitching forums and Berlinale is that it's, it's a sign of the times also. Again, the key word is now TV series. All the major film festivals are moving into television or have uh, done it already. Uh, they were just announced uh, that in the Cannes Film Festival they will be screening TV. Uh, Berlinale has now had their own sort of subsection of the Berlinale co-production market concerned with television, with both pitch screenings, um, panels, uh, it's all there, um, and we were very lucky to be selected as a project. Still, uh, just you know, we had hadn't really green lit, uh, but we were like on the cusp to start production and pre-production, but uh, to be in the inaugural year of the Berlinale pitch, so which their concept is: they they there's seven projects uh, presented in ten minutes each to a room of uh, potential co-producers, distributors, broadcasters. Um, but moving fast through the timeline, this was a, a, a pivotal point for us. Uh, we were able to attract a lot of distribution um, uh, interest, which comes from the fact that we are a Norwegian show, <laughs> and just now, because of, uh, of, uh, of the whole wave of, of, uh, of focus on the Nordic countries and, and, and shows coming up from both uh, Sweden and Denmark before us, we have now the eye of the world which is a, uh, already an interesting uh, thing, uh, or a lucky, lucky thing for us. Anyway, we uh, spent 2015 uh, completing the writing and starting pre-production, um, and then we moved into 2016, which uh, there was a break of two months uh, between the stages of production. Uh, this also has to do with the form of the production, where the series creator also directed all the episodes. He was also the lead writer. So even though there were th uh, altogether three writers involved in addition to Eric, my, my namesake, there's two Eric's in this project, um, uh, we had to model the whole production uh, that, uh, there's a, uh, that the, the creator was also directing. This is also why you can see uh, things uh, take time. We can't really lock the edits until Eric has had time to get into the, the uh, editing room and to, to, to continue the job after shooting. And then we delivered. There's a tiny little thing in October there. The last piece of financing in place. Hmm, isn't that a bit late? You already shot the thing. You've locked four episodes. We had a, actually, I didn't mention it here, but we also had screened the first episode at the series series. It was the world premiere. There's a f television festival in uh, Fontainebleau uh, in France. Uh, this was uh, uh, the, the, our, uh, from the producing standpoint, uh, the financing standpoint, uh, the moment we were able to breathe whew, freely. Um, so uh, I will get back to how we ended up in that situation, but we greenlit perhaps a bit too early. Um, then we opened this year. This is uh, just a selection of, uh, of uh, all kinds of uh, PR and things. Uh, we are very proud and happy of the, of the performance in Norway, and uh, also that uh, we are well on our way to be, have good international distribution. There is no channel in Spain, Yet, we have, I know we're being reviewed by Spanish uh, platforms and channels, uh, but uh, we hope to, to secure a distribution also here. Walter Presents was mentioned in the previous panel as this uh, curated premium streaming service. They are great friends. They, together with Channel 4, bought the show for the UK and also for the US, where they launched Walter Presents. Uh, it's, this, uh, it's a fantastic uh, platform curated by Walter Iusolino, uh, who is originally Italian but has worked as a commissioner uh, in, uh, in the UK for a long time. Um, yes, so here we go. This is us for now. Should I quit my job? We this took 11 years for this idea, this kernel of an idea to reach the screen. This is a lot of the... Um, uh, the, the reality for developing these huge projects. We're a small company. Uh, it takes time to, to earn and, uh, uh, I mean, to build up the quality of the writing and the material and to build the show creatively, but also to build the partners involved. Uh, I have not quit my job. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, still something I enjoy very much. We are hoping to do a second season uh, of the show. Uh, but uh, uh, in talks with NRK about that right now. 
but I will backtrack a little bit to talk about why we made this show. Why, why spend all these years on making this show? And for me, and for a lot of the people we like to work with, these, I mean, you can also see it in our filmography. We make uh, feature films, TV series, we even make short films. Uh, we make animation. For us and Turden Film, it's important to, that we get to make what we want to make, and we'll keep doing that until somebody stops us, and nobody has stopped us yet. That's the core idea. Um, but Valkyrian came out, if you notice the timeline, um, uh, the real construction of the show was five, six years ago uh, with uh, the, the two, uh, with Eric, the series creator, and Thomas, the original idea uh, and, and writer, uh, and myself. Um, uh, we had just uh, come out of the... Uh, we were still feeling the effects of the, of the global uh, financial crisis. And this was something... I was a new parent. Uh, there was, uh, the world was complex. The world was uh, difficult um, to understand, and uh, we also saw that also in Norway there is, uh, you know, this image of Norway as a very well-run, systematically uh, well-run country. There's a welfare state. We trust in our authorities. We score low on corruption. We score high on happiness. All this stuff, but still. There is a lot of uh, gray areas, a lot of shadow economy, a lot of people who actually either choose to be outside society. We were interested in them. We thought if there's internal justice in, you know, in the underworld, not only in the criminal uh, world, but also in, in, uh, in, uh, in the informal economy, maybe there's a doctor as well. You know, This is where the doctor idea came from. But the whole doomsday thematic uh, was something that uh, we saw, and this actually is related to, to, to a, one thing was we noticed was a statistic that here in Spain, there was a 50% unemployment rate for young people. I mean, this was, there was uh, fascism on the rise in Greece. There was uh, uh, instability, economic difficulty uh, in Europe. And, uh, and we thought that in Norway, people are just talking about where do we spend the next vacation? Uh, by the sea or in the mountains. We felt there was really a disconnect, and this is sort of the burning uh, thematic that we wanted to, to lift in this show. Um, so, so we are always uh, making our shows and looking for shows that are, uh, uh, and ideas that are uh, from a need to tell a story. And then it can be this format, it can be this format, but the, for, for this idea and this concept and this thematic, the, the series format was was good. We also wanted to go beyond Nordic Noir, as you saw in our sales trailer. First point is important. Uh, this is already uh, something that, I mean, our show is definitely based on the DNA of Nordic Noir and can be seen as a part of that tradition. But we knew we would spend two years making it. So we thought, how can we still be fresh? Okay, we have to have a, a, a discussion about how to, to develop the visual language, how to work with genres, how to, to, to somehow future-proof the show. Um, and, uh, uh, but, but in terms of separating ourselves also from the, the very hard and violent crime thriller genre, uh, we, we, we made a decision to, to, to try and, 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 and go beyond that. Creating a series is like also creating like a factory of, of, uh, of stories that we can put, you know, whatever's on the writer's mind that they are really burning, you know, up to, to talk about. Uh, that was sort of the, the concept construction of Valkyrian is to have this partnership on the ground, this illegal clinic. You can have patients coming in and out uh, who can represent stories, represent people, represent groups of people. Uh, both uh, uh, from the sort of the underworld, but also from above ground. Uh, and once you have that set, you know, TV series is about making something that can go and go and go. Also, um, once you have set that, we can uh, we can uh, we can choose the topics by choosing the stories we bring into the clinic, in addition to the overarching story of the series. Uh, uh, and this is also a way to to allow uh, multiple seasons. Mm, that's uh, Eric, uh, the series creator, by the way, um, right there. So, financing. As you can see, we are already very fortunate in Norway to have uh, a uh, public broadcaster who is uh, 
uh, commissioning uh, already a lot of the of the basis of the foundation, and we are able to. Uh, we at least in this case we were able to apply for and compete for additional public funding. So as you can see, already 75% uh, is uh, is kind of set already, and you can even add uh, uh, producers' own investment and some other equity investors, and you are already. Uh, 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 beyond 80% uh, in financing. So, returning to co-production, uh, we were actually uh, had a big discussion about should we try and find, there was still a gap, of course, and the Nordic Film and TV Fund is also public funding, but it's also very competitive to get that, so we you can't rely on it. Um, and also, the pre-sales and MGs, whatever we were able to to gather from outside of, of uh, Norway and the Nordic region was still not set at the, at the time we, we greenlit. But already we had a foundation to work from. Then we had a discussion, okay, do we move, do we find a co-producing country and move shooting and other th things which are often following from co-production, uh, you know, to access incentives or to, you know, you have to spend money in other countries. And we debated moving uh, a part of the production and attracting a, a co-producer in, uh, uh, in Eastern Europe, in, in Hungary or, or the Czech Republic. Uh, we scouted locations and we talked to potential co-producers. Uh, but then we also found out something, and this was where the conflict came for our project. It conflicted with specificity. Um, uh, our show is really an Oslo show. It had an ambition to really use the city and show sides of the city also for the Norwegian audience that really they hadn't, didn't know was there. It's about what is right underneath your feet as you walk along the street in your city. Um, old bomb shelters, the subway system, uh, secret passages, you know, that uh, I think all major cities have underneath them. Uh, and uh, uh, this spoke against moving a lot of the production to uh, a different uh, uh, country. Uh, another thing was actually, we, we try to have a philosophy at, at my company to, to, it's a bit of a cliche to be, to be artist friendly, but we believe that to attract the best talents that want to come and work with us, we, uh, we give them the opportunity to also have a life in addition to working for us. We want to be, uh, you know, in a production like this, uh, which takes up a year uh, of the, a lot of the department heads' time. Uh, we want to be able to tell them that, hey, you can, you, we're actually going to stay home. We're going to shoot right, right here in Oslo. And that makes uh, a lot of people who have high-level offers from feature films and other drama series, that makes us attractive. You know, even people that are, uh, uh, are attractive uh, or, or heads of department that have offers from uh, big productions in foreign countries, we were able to say, no, you know what? In the next year, we're going to stay right here and we're going to shoot in Oslo and it's going to be great. And this is also these points, the specificity, Oslo, uh, real Oslo locations, uh, and, the, the, uh, uh, and how we constructed the team that we wanted around uh, Eric and the, the, the rest of the, and the writers, uh, was actually, and already coming along uh, uh, with financing, we decided to, to uh, not go out into the into the broader European uh, co-production uh, market as such. However, there was still a big gap in terms of uh, having to do sales. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and also to qualify for the Nordic Film and TV Fund, you have to have distribution in, more and more, uh, in, in, more, in several Nordic countries. So it became actually important for us to do a co-production anyway, but it became like this. We co-produced with Denmark with our great partners Fritjof Film, but their main job was to actually help create a market for us in Denmark. And this may sound strange to people from outside the Nordic uh, region, but uh, in Norway, we watch Danish shows, Swedish shows all the time. Uh, they don't really watch our shows. That's a new development. Uh, there really is in the last three or four years, that, uh, or two or three years, that uh, especially... Uh, uh, that Sweden and Denmark have become uh, uh, more interested in screening Norwegian language series. Uh, Finland has been good at, uh, 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 YLE has been good at buying uh, Norwegian uh, series, and uh, we, lo we love them for that. Uh, <laughs> 
But in Denmark, we actually wanted and needed a co-producing partner who, who knew the buyers better than I did or we did to, to secure a, uh, a broadcaster and to follow that up. So we follow a very simple model of co-production to achieve that. And then also we are working with Frito Film on... Uh, uh, we had worked with them already on a, on a, on a, uh, a genre series for, for uh, teens called uh, Heartless. Uh, and then uh, so we are sort of... We, we co-produce each other's things now. Then we went to national. Look at these handsome devils. Uh, this is from Berlin two years ago. We, uh, pitches, uh, we pitched there at the Berlin Alle co-production market. So when do you go abroad? You know, when do you expand? You know, when, how, and, you know. In my experience, it's really on a case-by-case -case basis. There are many arenas for this. You can find them, you can discover these arenas for, you know, bringing your project. And I do think that with, again, this frenzied focus on television drama, these new uh, sets of buyers, these opportunities for local languages to be distributed uh, with, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of... Uh, uh, yeah, Borgen was mentioned as a, as a sort of, kind of a watershed moment with, for subtitled dramas, and that has just continued. Uh, you can find, uh, you know, your, your, um, your, um, your forum, but... Uh, uh, and there are several that are good, but in my experience at least, uh, which is limited, uh, since this is all kind of new, uh, this whole uh, in interna internationalization, this whole boom in, in Europe, is to, it's, I think it's important to have, or at least it helps to have a broadcaster already uh, behind you in your, in your country. I think that's a very important box to check for foreign, uh, you know, um, partners to, to see that there is uh, somebody already wants this in the local um, language and local country. And, uh, and uh, there are many ways of pitching. Uh, at the time we pitched this, all we had was that picture on, on the back there, uh, which was just some concept art from... Uh, that was all we had and the concept of the show and the ambition of the show. That was what we pitched. It took 10 minutes. And uh, the result from that was astonishing. Uh, uh, we were very, but that's, it comes from the, the room was full of, of, uh, of, of uh, people interested in hearing about new uh, shows from all over the world. So the, already the audience was good. But we had, I think, 13 interested distribution companies because we were very clear in the pitch about what were we looking for. And we weren't really looking for major co-producing partners. We were looking for distribution. 13 companies and ended up with five concrete offers. So uh, we, and then we, uh, we were very happy to choose to work with a French company uh, uh, called About Premium Content, and they have been our fantastic partners ever since. Also because returning to what did we learn? Uh, returning to the financing problem, because uh, we made a faulty assumption when we said, okay, we got 80-something percent, we're doing it. Everybody came on board and we started production. Uh, but we made a faulty presumption that the foreign pre-sales market was stronger than it was for our project, at least. So the last piece of financing I mentioned, which came only just three months before we premiered the show, was pre-sales. And because uh, now there is... Again, with the key word being TV series, everybody's doing TV series. Yes, there are more buyers. Yes, there are um, uh, platforms, there's competition, there's an abundance of genre. You can work in comedy or drama or horror or whatever you want. There's, you know, there's niche buyers for everything. But there's also so much product out there right now. Um, uh, and we felt that, okay, we have, uh, you know... Uh, there's an interest in Norwegian drama right now, you know, there's others have gone before us and paved the way. But we made an assumption that they were able to buy it on the concept uh, or, or like an early uh, trailer. But for our show, at least, I can't speak for all shows, but for our show, buyers would want to wait and see, you know? So it was only after we had done, we had shot everything uh, and edited, we made a very early plan, which was, uh, it turned out to be very lucky for us that we wanted to have the first two episodes available extra early. So they were already ready last summer. 
And it was only when we started screening these first two episodes and sending them to buyers that people said, oh yes, I would like this or no thanks. So um, uh, uh, we were able to sleep uh, soundly again uh, when we were able to, to close more pre-sales, but it was, can you even call it pre-sales? You know, I'm not sure. Because uh, it was, uh, maybe we, we, we talked about it as early sales. You have actual episodes to show, but it's before the premieres, before uh, launching in markets. So, some learning points. Don't green light too early. I think uh, we landed on our feet, but it was not really uh, sure. We are a small company. We don't have, uh, we are self-owned, independent company. Also, as I mentioned a little bit, working with a single combined creator and director, uh, we had to model the entire show on, uh, on this. Just checking the time. Uh, I should actually start uh, wrapping up soon. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, sorry, I can, you can give me, a, you know, give me half an hour, I can just go for hours. Um, uh, we built the show so that we were able to do it with this one single creator all the way, and it worked. But it also means things stretch out in time, as I said. And that's also um, uh, uh, something that we want to, for a second season, work on to see how can we make it, uh, uh, how can we keep the one vision and uh, and still uh, uh, produce it um, in a bit shorter time. The world market, there are a lot of series, as I just said, and also partners, because what do you do when you're still missing some pieces of financing and you're you know you're shooting, you're spending money, other people's money. And that everybody's uh, wanting you know, to have the master tapes. And uh, that's when, you know, the relationship to the commissioning broadcaster was important, the distributor, our uh, post-production and, uh, and, uh, and uh, facilities. It's really, you know, everybody came together. Everybody was uh, uh, really supporting the show, making sure that we were able to progress and we were able to, to, to land everything. Uh, uh, but really it's, you know, choosing your partners wisely. It's a bit of a cliche or a bit of a thing, but it's doing a show like this, you are going to be working on it, well, for, in my case, six years, uh, plus now we are releasing it and uh, launching. Um, uh, but in many cases, at a minimum, it's like three or four years of your life, so you need to be, uh, have uh, close partners. That also goes with co-production. Um, thanks. And uh, would anybody like to ask some questions, if there is time? Um, yeah, I just have this question. You were talking about this gap financing that yes. you, were, you kept going on, even though the, the financing plan was not full yet. Mm. So I, I was just wondering, how do you decide to take this risk? Uh, you, you say that you're a small company. It could just ruin mm. the whole thing that you've built for years. Yeah. Um, when do you decide to say we will find the money anyway, rather mm. than say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna have to um, to make it a smaller budget, like mm. we're gonna make, need to make economy. That would have been a consequence, yes. Uh, but of course, uh, the gap was in the end was quite uh, you know it's quite low in percent. There was like maybe uh, let me let me think, like uh, three or four percent, but it's still a lot out of seven million euro. But it's still, it's not like we, we have half the money and we're going anyway. It's really, it was, you know, uh, but it was, a, it was, we did have a strong uh, sense that the show would be able to attract sales and to have distribution. This was, at, you know, also uh, bolstered by, uh, by the feedback we had when we did present the show internationally. So it was a calculated risk. Um, uh, but also it was like this, that was the moment we had the opportunity. It really was a tough choice to make, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's about lining up. Again, these are long, long, big projects with a very concrete deadline from the broadcaster, and, but you are also uh, locking up uh, crew and locking up uh, actors and everything, services, facilities for a long time. So uh, coming to that point, there was a choice between postponing and maybe losing a lot of the key elements and maybe also having a very uh, even tighter schedule later, because uh, delivery was delivery in terms of the commissioner. Um, but, uh, but um, yeah. Redu reducing the budget has never been an option. Yes, it was, but, uh, and we did have to, uh, but that's more, 
it's always a fight of, of, of holding the budget anyway, so that would go on anyway. But, uh, but yes, uh, it was an option, but uh, we decided to, to have the same goal because we felt that was a minimum of what we, want, for what we wanted to do. And we did, it, we did reach the goal, but, uh, but we had to be patient, was my main point, is that... Uh, and, uh, but with, with, with the market changing so much, uh, I would not make the same decision again. Because, again, if I knew now, uh, now if I'm making another one, another show, it's going to be on the air in two years, who knows what the market will be in two years, you know? So, so that's why the learning point is don't green light too early still. Yes. That's it. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys.